a volunteer is the most powerful person in any environment, any place. When a person is a volunteer, they possess information, crowns, rewards, incentives that other people wait years to get. They grow faster. A volunteer grows faster than anybody. A volunteer is intentional about their own growth. A volunteer. A volunteer is not waiting to be coached into greatness. A volunteer is intentional about their own greatness. They're intentional about their own growth, their own maturity. They taught us that women must be pursued. That's what they told us. They told us that the gentleman thing to do is that a man pursues a woman. A man goes after a woman. That's what they taught us. That was the masculinity information that they gave men. Men go after women. Men pursue women. If you want a woman, go after her. Pursue her, pursue her, pursue her. But here's the wild thing. When does that information become witchcraft? God created a woman for a man to help a man. So if the man is pursuing her, when will she learn to pursue the man? Because that is her office as his woman. When? We've been taught information that took people out of being volunteers. We've been taught information by the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that took people out of being volunteers. Women weren't created to be pursued. You have to pursue a stupid woman. You never have to pursue a wise woman. The Bible talks about Ruth as a pursuer. Esther was not being pursued. The king held a whole ceremony and he as a bachelor wanted to pick who would be a woman compatible as his top woman to handle his kingdom affairs that would not tell him no. That had no dishonor in her. That was not coming into the relationship with curses. And so he holds a ceremony and he looks at every woman. And then he's so smart because he doesn't deal with the woman directly. He sends people to talk with the woman. And they study to see how she handles assignments, how she spends her time, how she handles authority. Is she prompt? That means, is she on time? Is she always on point? How does she carry her hygiene? Is she always ready? Is she always willing? Do she have attitude problems? Do she get depressed? Is she tormented by her past? Is she seeking vengeance? Is she angry at life? Do she need constant coaching? Do she need a tutor? Do she need to be daycared? Do she need a supervisor at all times so that she complete things? Do she need to keep on asking for forgiveness because she keep doing it wrong? These people are just watching all the women, not just Esther. See, it, it looked like it was only Esther, the only woman. No, no, no. There, there's all type of woman and all these people the king has monitoring them. Looking to see who's the real woman. Which woman fits the description of God? Some women were beggarly. Some women were weak. Some women were meek. Some women didn't know how to seek. 
Some women didn't know how to speak. Some women didn't know how to greet. Some women was on the list to delete. Some women had crocodile feet. Some women didn't want to swallow. There was all... There was all... One, two, three, four... Kookamonga knocking at the door. There was all type of woman. Being interviewed. <laughs> all the women had different reports at the end of the day. And guess what? Esther's report was flying colors. She was a volunteer. She was a pursuer. Esther didn't need to be babied. Esther loved first. Esther loved first. I pray for all my sons. And it's going to happen. The Lord shall give you a woman that pursues you. You will be her God and she will worship you. It's already happened. It's already happening. But I speak forth on 50 more of my sons that God will give you a woman that is a true queen. She's not wearing crowns as accessories. But she is unlocking crowns through her fruits. You have to pursue weak women. Women that are weak have to be pursued. Because they're not operating in the image of God. Remember... That woman will be called to help you. That means she has to pursue what your problems are. How could you be a help meet to someone that you never pursue? Imagine a boss hiring five assistants. And four of the assistants are in the, the workroom and they're, they're all talking together and they're saying, uh, everybody, don't get on your phones. We're going to wait for the boss to tell us what he needs. We're going to wait for the boss to tell us what he needs. And 10 hours go by. And they don't hear nothing. And they're still in the room. That's, and some of them, they, they go out for a little while, they use the restroom and go into get a little snack. And they're all sitting together. And four of them say, you know, we're waiting for the boss to tell us what to do. We, we're going to wait. We're going to hold on strong and wait for the boss. We're going to wait. And one of them gets up and calls their boss and says, Boss, how are you doing? Are you okay? Is there anything that I could do to help you? You need any assistance anywhere? Have you ate? Have you gotten things done? Do you need me to? The boss is going to work with that one. The other four are in jeopardy and don't know it. Their understanding has jeopardized their position unknowingly because they're not highly smart. They're borderline stupid. Number one, the boss not there for you. You there for the boss. So wouldn't it 10 hours let you know that there's something that I need to be pursuing from the boss? So they're stupid. The one that goes in and talks and volunteers, the boss says, finally, there's my spirit. Finally, there's my true assistant. 
That's why I did posts talking about God's true church. Not these people that go to a building every Sunday. Not these people that, that call themselves by titles and people that call themselves congregants. Not, not them. The true church of Jesus are volunteers. They are offering up themselves all the time. The true bride of Christ is the body of Christ. That is his body. That means that they understand if this is your body, your body has a schedule to do something. Your body, do you understand what body of Christ? So if it's Christ's body, that means that Christ has on the calendar that he wants to do something. So you're doing nothing. Imagine you're saying that Christ does nothing. Well, what am I supposed to do? Volunteer. I remember Dr. Mike Murdoch was telling me that when he would speak things to his people, I remember he was telling me this. And I'm telling you because he, he made it public as well. So it's, it's not like it's like something private, confidential. It's not confidential because he, he talks about it. He would say that he likes something. And the people around him would say, I like that too. And Dr. Mike Murdoch said he studied and watched there was consecutive people agreeing that they liked it too. And he had wanted it. And nobody had the brains to say, let me offer myself to go get it for you. The problem with wise men is that we could know that you're stupid before you do. That's the burden of wisdom. Because you have open eyes to view all the stupid people in your life. One time I was somewhere. And there was um, several people I was training. And at the time I was with. An entourage in I was going to a movies and I looked and studied I had already clearly said what I was doing there was some people didn't even move they stayed in their location, never pursuing what I had already said I was about to do. You know what I did? Left their dumb ass. And I told my chauffeur, anybody that's not here, if they that stupid, they don't need to be here. If they that stupid, if they, if they if if their brain, if while if the if the Holy Spirit can't talk to them, I'ma leave Kuta Kente. Do you know why people have assumption? Because they're not volunteers. Oh, you know, I was thinking that. Uh, you was mad at me. But your punk ass didn't find out. If I was mad. <laughs> you imagine, you imagine how stupid you is. You imagine people going to be on the day of judgment talking about, I thought that you wanted me to send my child there. 
So why are they going to receive a judgment of eternal hell? They wasn't volunteers. A volunteer wants to get it right. Somebody that will sit down and not know if it's right and still be at peace is a big jerk. Because that's what the Holy Ghost that you, you believe you possess, that's what, it, that's what he does in you. Oh, I don't know, but I ain't going to do nothing for it. I'm going to eat all day, drink all day, drink by myself, eat by myself, sleep by myself, do everything by myself. You're not going to find out. You're not going to find out. What are you willing to continue in your ignorance? You, you still going to continue it and you don't know? Wow. Your IQ is wonderful, boy. You're intelligent. Smart. Smart. Saints, let me tell you about this life. You can't even say I'm married or I'm already in school. Or I'm already at this job. Or I'm already at this college. Or I'm already in this apartment. I'm already in this house. I'm already with this car. You need to find out, Lord, what's your will? It's funny how sometimes you can look at life and say, it'll be too much for me to get out of this. But you forget it's going to be too much when you're trying to get out of hell. And you can't get out. There's nothing on earth that you say, I can't get out of this. That could be compared to be a person trying to get out of hell. The lake of fire when you're burning. Are you the pursuer? Do you love first? Do you love first? Oh, I'm not going to apologize because they not apologizing to me. You are supposed to love first. Oh, oh well, they didn't say sorry. So why I got to say sorry? Because your understanding is higher. Do you love first? Do you love first? What type of man are you? Do you volunteer? You go ask anybody that has a job. Do you have a job? Okay, you have a job. How many times do you volunteer? Uh, well, you know, I, I do, I, I do, I do my job the best that I can and try to get stuff done. Is your boss pleased with you? Well, I, I hope, I hope. Whenever you hear somebody say, I hope. Also, you don't got clarity. Well, why don't you have confidence? Do you think that somebody will not get pleasure if you volunteer? Don't you think that you will be able to confidently even speak on their behalf because you're always volunteering? You're a pursuer. You are someone that they've been looking for in their corp corporation, their organization. That's what they wanted. They wanted somebody that was going to be on fire about their mission. Saints, we're training people wrongly. We're training people wrongly. 
Oh, you know, make sure he pursue you. Okay, so what happens when that man buy your house, buy your car? He feeds you, he clothe you. What your punk ass gonna do? Oh. He's pursuing me. You love him? Yeah, I love him, man. He's such a gentleman. But what can he say about you? We're training people wrong. Saints, I noticed this. I, I've, I've been around many women in my life. I'm talking about hundreds. And I could count on my finger how much people I slept with. I, I, can count, I could count on my finger how much people I slept with in life. Been around hundreds of women. You know what I noticed? It's, it's the woman that always talk about, I want a man to pursue. Then be the stank woman. Then be the woman look like Ninja Turtles. Then be the woman they couldn't even put on makeup for two, three days straight. And it's the woman that think that they're supposed to be pursued. They're not even at the level to be pursued. If a man pursue you after a while, he gonna get bored because you ain't ain't nothing, ain't nothing to you. Ain't nothing divine about you. You still got the same thoughts as every other woman. You still got the same mentality and same emotions. You still got the same reactions to conflict. You still got the same approach to life. You got the same work ethic. You know, some, of you, some of them ain't even got no work ethic. So, so you want to be pursued? But after you get pursued, there's disappointment. Because you don't match what you want. So a man pursue you, pursue you, pursue you. What's going to be his harvest? What will he get out of you? How will you help him? How will you help him in food? How will you help him in clothes? How will you help him in protection? How will you help him in assignments? How will you help him in respect? Tone of voice, words, cho choice words. How will you help him with how you live your personal life? Because saints, let me show you, let me show you how personal life is so important. Say somebody hire you, and then three weeks after they hire you, you start doing crack. And, and, and they, they, they call you, uh, uh, I, I thought you was coming in. Meanwhile, your crack addiction done took over. It's affecting your attendance. It's affecting how you come in on time. It's affecting how you work. It's affecting the, the duration of time it takes you to finish an assignment. Think about it. And now they're, they're looking at the, 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 the interruption of your productivity. Your abilities are being suffocated. And the addiction of your personal life is affecting the mission of what they called you to complete. And saints, this is what happens when you don't grow up and become the image of God that you were made to be. You're affected by demonic strongholds when you are called by God. And so those demonic strongholds have you not being a volunteer. Well, I ain't going to say nothing. Well, you, you're not going to say nothing because of pride. You had the thought to say something, but you rejected the thought because you a jackass. Jackass people reject thoughts that come from God. That's why they're fools. 
And that's why their life don't go the way it's supposed to go. Because they have trained themselves throughout the course of their life to reject the impression of the spirit. When the spirit drops something into their soul, they say, no, I ain't going to do that. I don't want to seem like this. You ever meet them type of people? I don't want to seem like I was pushy. I don't want to seem like, because you're a jackass. You, you was trained to be a jackass by your father, Lucille. Lucille Lufusa, Lu, Lufusa, Lucifer Jefferson. That, that, do you have an ability on the inside of you that could block off thoughts that God give you and say, no, I ain't going to yield to that? Uh-uh. You, I feel like doing it, but I ain't going to do nothing. Yeah. Imagine. That's why your generation's been cursed. Look at the woman in your generation. Look at the men in your generation. How many of them were walking out in the blessing of Abraham, living the life that Abraham lived, living the life that Sarah lived? How many of them can you look and say, I had a great grandfather that submitted himself to God, died to himself, followed the Holy Ghost, rejected sin, walked in the spirit, denied darkness, loved the truth, walked after the spirit. How many could you say? You can't say. You could talk about church going. You could talk about people going to Bible study, Bible school, but you can't give scriptural account of people that successfully lived out the word in its totality. You look at people, you say that they pray, but then they die. They suffer before they die. They always go into the hospital. They up there got hospital bills, can't even pay the hospital bills. They in debt. They're trying to raise money to buy a casket, bless God. Imagine trying to raise money. You got to do a whole PayPal fundraiser for you to raise some money to get buried. That's some bull. Imagine looking at yourself from afterlife. You are already burning in hell. Then you got to look up there. People laughing at you in hell. Look at you. You ain't even accumulate enough finances for them to bury you. Look at your corpse. They're up there trying to figure out how they're going to find money. That's how stupid you was. You think that they talk to you correct in hell? They disrespect you because you're lost. When you go to hell, they're not talking to you with respect. Because there was no reason to respect you. You disrespected your God. You didn't even receive the life he had for you. That's why you're down there. You think demons up there having some counseling match with people down there? Tell us, oh, it's okay. You're just going to be another day. God going to have mercy on you. The blood going to help you. There's always forgiveness. He's a merciful God. You think that that's what demons telling you down there? Demons laughing at you because you're lost. And you was given the weapons of your warfare for victory. Are you a volunteer? People that are not volunteers bring God to tears. Because he done did enough for you. For you to be on fire. He done did enough for you. For you to be the pursuer in the relationship. What Jesus got to do next for you? He done died on the cross. Laid down his life. Spat upon they done laughed at him, had him butt naked on the cross, skin falling off his body, bones in jeopardy of being broken, never was broken. Imagine went through all that suffering for you. What else? What else? You were supposed to be way on fire for God as a woman, as a man. Up there twitting in your fingers. Oh, I'm going to wait on God to call me. When God call me, I'm going to be ready to go. Nigga. God shouldn't even have to call you. You should be calling on the name of the Lord, volunteering yourself. That's how you going to live your whole life? Oh, I'm with, and when God call me, I'm going to be ready to go. As soon as God call me, I'm going to be up on it. As soon as God give me an instruction, I'm going to be ready to move. That's your reaction to Jesus intentionally laying down his life for you? That's how you respond to Jesus. Oh, when he called me, I, I, I ain't going to tell him no. I'm always be ready when he called me. So you're not going to call him. You're not going to pick up the phone and call him. 
He got to call you. He's still pursuing you after he showed you no greater love than this. That's, that's, that's what our generation consists of. That's why we have prophets praying for a move of God. Imagine Elijah, Elisha, Moses, prophet Joshua Holmes, all demonstrate high levels of God's glory. Imagine we have people leading people talking about let's pray together and call on God. Let's, let's hope that he answers us. Let's seek him for a move of God. Imagine you're supposed to be my spiritual leader. And me and you both are looking for God to answer us. So may I ask you, why must I fear you? Even the Bible tells you that when a prophet... He talk out of his head. And he just say whatever. It is not led by God. He said not to fear him. Don't fear him. In the same bracket as you. How much more you fear the one. That has accuracy. You fear the one that has credibility, that teaches the word in season, out of season, continuously, laboring in the word and in doctrine. How much more? And the Bible talks about not fearing someone that's always making mistakes. How much more you must fear someone that is constantly bringing you out of yours, bringing you out of your mistakes, I was thinking about it. I look at a lot of stuff that I've been blessed with. But my mindset is different than other people. I take things by force and I volunteer. I'm intentional. People like to twiddle their finger and they don't got no intentionality about nothing. They wait for life to happen or, or you know, I don't know what God want me to do. I'm going to wait on him today to tell me what to do. I'm going to wait on him. But you didn't talk with him? I'm waiting on him to tell me what to do. Imagine seeking to serve a God that you don't even know him. You don't know that he wants somebody that's after him. He wants somebody that's on fire about him. That's what he wants. He wants somebody that initiates conversation. He wants someone that initiates servanthood. They initiate worship. Imagine trying to go to heaven to live with somebody that you didn't even unlock to know why you was on his earth. Well, well, well I, I, I want to know him to the best of my ability. I want to do the best I can. You know, I, I, I want to please him. That's what I really desire to do. That's, that's what God gave you a mouth for you to talk. He gave you a heart for you to ponder and purpose. That's why the Bible even talk about seed sowing. It says that you purpose in your heart to give. He gave you a heart for you to create goals purposes, plans, and say, let me intentionally go after the Lord. There's so many people, they're not intentional about anything. All they do is wait. You, you never went to your boss and asked your boss what they needed? You're a thief. You tell me, well, well, probably how am I a thief? I, I get paid. My boss gave me a paycheck. Exactly. They pay you to volunteer. No, no, no. They gave me my work assignment. Your work assignment is an idea that you've been called to my problems. It's not the totality of the job. It's a partiality of the job. Wow. 
Look at Proverbs chapter 14, verse 18. The simple inherit folly. The simple inherit folly. But the prudent are crowned with knowledge. The Bible says when you are in the bracket of the simple, you inherit folly. Do you know what I mean? Your inheritance is becoming more stupid. That's what you inherit. You get dumber and dumber and dumber as time goes on. You get alienated from who God wanted you to be. That's what happened when you choose to be the simple. You get more stupid as time go on. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil is getting deeper in its root inside of you. Bible says, but the prudent are crowned with knowledge. Crowned. You know why it says crown? Because that knowledge is also carrying crowns promotions, exaltations. So what you're learning is helping you unlock crowns. Are you a simple woman? Are you a simple man? Saints, I'll be honest with you. When I was 20 something years old early in life, I, I had a thought. I was I was thinking, man, I'm gonna give a lot of people jobs. I'm gonna give a lot. And saints, oh, the level of stupidity I saw in people. I was so shocked, it almost brought me to my knees. That people were so stupid. And it didn't matter which. Age level. You know, you, you think people, if they're 50 or they're 40 or they're 30, you know, it's not no teenager, you know. Maybe if they're 60, maybe if they're 70, 80, 90, 75, 55, 45, 35. And you, you're like, oh, well, they, and maybe age, you know, maybe age is, is a different level of mind. But you rather, oh, it's almost like everybody don't, by the way, that vision changed. <laughs> By the time I was like 26, 27, I was like, uh-uh. I'm not going to die early trying to bear the burdens of people that are cursed. They're cursed in their personality. They're cursed in their work ethic. They're cursed in their approach to favor. Best decision of my life. Best decision of my life. You look at my face. Maybe I would have had wrinkles by now. I probably would have had wrinkles. Because I don't go through the stress of stupid people. If I had went that path, oh, bless God. I probably would have been on that infomercial at 3 a.m. talking about crow's feet. <laughs> you know, I just used that crow's feet lotion. And, you know, I, I would have been telling my testimony. I put that crow's feet lotion on the side of my eye. And uh, it burned a little. You know, after it burned a little, you know, it was all right. I took a little cold shower. And I got to take a little cold shower, you know, put a little Vaseline, you know. You know, Vaseline don't really be out because, you know, the rainbows be, you know, the rainbows just, it's a lot, it's a lot, there's a lot going on out here. There's a lot of rainbow amphibians. There's <laughs> a lot of rainbow amphibians out here and about. You'll see what I'm saying. Don't, don't feel me. Don't feel me how you feel me. Don't feel me how you're feeling me. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. There's a lot of rainbows. There's a lot of, there's a lot of, there's a lot of that. A, so the Vaseline, not always in the stars. You see what I'm saying? Not always in the stars. But I happen to pull up on my couple Vaselines. I stocked them up in the closet. You know, I wasn't trapped in the closet. But the person that checked me out, her last name was Kelly. I'm going to tell you that right now. And I was rolling. Don't think about it. Don't think about it. 
Don't you think about it, but You know, I picked that crow's feet on, picked that little tox toxicity right there. You know, it burnt me a little. And then I, my vision got a little blurry, you know, and, and I ain't want to get blind. So so I didn't take the next dosage. I took about a couple hours, but when I woke up, it, the, the, the lines was gone. All of that was gone. Saints, you can't be burdened down by people that choose to be dumb. You can't let your soul be grieved by those who do not reject the folly of foolishness and Satan. Look at what Proverbs chapter 14, verse 22 says. Do they not err that devise evil? Do they not err that devise evil? Look what it's saying. Do you know what error means? Error is the root word for error. Do they not go into wrong decisions that devise evil? That means that inside of you, your planning is against the way that God wanted it to be. You're thinking about things that he didn't want you to think about. And what he wanted you to think about is not in you. You're not thinking about it. You will sketch saints. When my daughter turned a certain age, every time she turned a certain age, I decree that she'll learn everything in the age that she's supposed to learn. In that age. Every age of your life, you're supposed to learn certain things. When you are foolish, you don't learn those things. That means that you're not the post... You're not the person you was made to be. So you don't even think the way you're supposed to think. You're behind schedule. That's where we get those terms, slow. Because you're not even at the brain flow. That was made for your age. When Jesus turned 30, the brain flow will start your ministry. If Jesus is a sinner, he doesn't start the ministry because he's too preoccupied with his own temptations, his own weaknesses, his own failures, his own faults, his own mistakes, his own errors his own witchcraft, his own satanic altars, his own enemies, his own adversaries, his own distractions. And that's what goes on with people all the time. You reach a certain age and the age have a whole prescription. It has a whole description. And ain't nothing that was prescribed or described happening. And then when you get frustrated and you, you start complaining, Oh, why? you know, I'm supposed to have this. The devil going to get his hand off my stuff. Baby, the devil over there in Mexico drinking on a martini. The devil don't even be involved in most of the stuff that you be going through. You go through stuff because you're just stupid. You imagine. You, you, you look at the course of some of your warfares. It consists of people that you was never supposed to talk to. It consists of places you were never supposed to go. It consists of things that you was never supposed to have. You know, you know, they're trying to take my car. You know, they out there every 3 a.m. trying to repossess my car. Meanwhile, God didn't even give you the car. He ain't even giving you the money to fund the car. And here you're stressed out about stuff that ain't got nothing to do with God's image for that age that you're in. In that age, there's no car. But you have a car. The stress is with the car. The stress is with something that God don't have in the age. 
Saints, do you know how much of our teenagers are in relationships, boyfriends? Then they get suicidal. They get involved in all type of stuff. Crazy stuff. And that was not even scheduled for the age that they're in. But because they're jackass, they'll take the route. Then they'll come to you, mommy, I'll just say, you know, when they can't take it no more. Saints, I watched a movie one time. In the movie, the girl met a boy. And as soon as she met the boy, she started cussing out her mama. Now, her mama had invested so much into her. Now, this is a common story. This happened in real life all the time. Her mama invested so much into her. And so she stages an argument. She disrespects her mama and she walks out because in her mind, she had already devised evil. She wanted to go with the boy. So she goes over to the boy. She has relations with the boy. And then the boy turns on her in less than 24 hours. She goes back to the mom's place and apologizes because her plan is not working. Do you know people in your life that they're not connecting with you because it's God's will? They're connecting with you because their evil plan is not working. As a matter of fact, they don't got no interest in Jesus at all. Not even 2%. Do you know who is using you as a scapegoat? I'm prophesying. And all my teachings will always prophesy. Everything that I will always tell you is to protect you. I baptize a large margin of you on October the 2nd. Was to jumpstart the physicality of the moving of the Holy Ghost. The intensity of the moving of the Holy Ghost. And with grace abounding, sin calls, distracts, so that you won't carry the revelation and the understanding of what happens. But that's why you see, when Jesus was baptized, he goes into denying himself. He amplifies his dedication to the Father which is what a lot of people don't do. In the moments of God's favor, you become less focused, less ambitious, less sacrificial. Saints, do you know that when you work out your body, I don't let soreness stop me. You're supposed to stretch before you work out, but you're also supposed to stretch after you work out. Man, today, I got a little workout in. But it's important. Soreness happens in the body to show you that workouts are working. Soreness does not mean stop. Soreness means rejoice because what I'm aiming for is happening. There's different type of exercises. Some people exercise to build muscle. 
Some people exercise to lose fat. The same motivation you have in exercising to lose fat, you also have to change the eating so that when you lose, because after you work out, you'll be extremely hungry. You'll have to train yourself to change what you eat if your exercising is to lose fat. If your exercising is to gain muscle, you also have to coincide with what you eat. You have to eat so that the fat could intermingle with the muscle and the appearance, because people work out for appearance. The appearance can happen correctly. If you working out to build muscle, and to build a, 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 a more bulkier look. When you work out, you lose. You lose a lot. So if you're not eating what you are aiming at to be more bulkier is not going to work. Because when you're working out, you're losing. You work out real good, you'll lose a pound real quick, you lose two pounds. There's different goals that people have. If you gain, if you're working out to gain muscle, you got to stretch as well. And then you don't want to overdo the pounds that you put on your weight thing. And then you want to aim at more reps rather than getting a big amount that you can't really handle. You don't want to get, say, okay, I'm going to stretch myself to go real big on pounds. And then you do a small amount of reps. When you could have picked a middleweight amount, meaning you can handle it, but it's still stretching you. It's still big. You know, you can feel the stretch on that. And you could do a lot of reps of that and you'll accomplish more than getting a big amount. And you up there just do three times. <laughs> Baby. You're supposed to stretch before you work out and after you work out. You know why? Because the bones get old and older every day. You got to wake your bones up. The Bible, God said to Ezekiel, can these bones live? So the bones died. So bones can die. Some of y'all never heard that before like that. Yeah, but it's always, it's only when you listen to Prophet Joshua Holmes. That's what I'm trying to tell you. The wisdom and mental I have is bizarre. Bones can die. How many of you on this line got dead bones? Saints, don't you hate when you get around them people always complaining about their bones? Ah, ah, shut up! Get back into the Holy Ghost about your body and fix this. Saints, I was, we had a basketball game the other day and the boy... He kept crying every minute. So I asked him, you good? He said, I keep cramping up. His bones kept hurting every minute. So I showed him how to stretch. Then I told him, go drink some water. But see... He was attempting to take his bones into something and his bones like, nah, I'm dead. You trying to resurrect me? Uh-uh. Is your bones alive? And then saints, let me just tell you like this. 
Some of you sowers on here, the spirit of God telling me that Satan attempted to kill you in your physical health because you don't drink much water. Your blood is bad. It's not working the way that it's supposed to work. You're supposed to enhance your bodily function with drinking the water and y'all drinking the wrong stuff. And Satan, he aiming on killing you through a means where you're walking in witchcraft towards your body. You're drinking all type of stuff, won't drink no water. Stop killing yourself. Especially when you're a woman, you're a weaker vessel. You drinking everything except what you need to be drinking. I done told you. I done told you. Saints, it's so funny. It's so, <laughs> it's so funny, boy. One time I was playing basketball and, and we got down to the last shot. And uh, it was the game winning shot. And I'll be hitting game winners all the time. And I, I remember I, I got the ball and the teammate was like, wait, 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 pass, pass. I said, shot up. Hit the game winner. It's funny. You, in moments of combat, People tend to lean on fear faster than capability. The flesh is more easier with fear because that's what you've been trained to do. Fear rather than capability. See, I've had that happen many a times, by the way. So, <laughs> You, you t Wait, wait, hold, hold up. Shut up. You don't even say shut up because you ain't got time. Shut up. S H A W P. Shut up. So here's the wisdom. Volunteer. Volunteer. If you got to be pursued, it's because you're dead. And it's funny how people get weary with pursuing. And God been pursuing your funky monkey all these years. And then God call you to pursue and you up there getting tired. God watch you get into relationship, have children out of wedlock, doing all type of bull crap. God watch you smoke, drink, text, sex, all that for years. And then when God call you to volunteer, God call you to pursue, you up there getting tired. Weary, upset, offended. I'm mad. No, I ain't doing that because I don't feel like nobody else is doing it. Why they ain't doing it? Why they ain't doing it? How come God didn't do that with you? How come when it was time to say you to hell, Jesus didn't say, why, why, why their parents, why their grandparents don't go die for this? Why their parents don't die for her? Why, why, why her children don't die for her? Why somebody, why her husband don't die for her? Why, 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 why his wife don't die for him? Why, why, why his children don't die for him? Why his mama don't, his daddy don't die for him? How come Jesus took on the cross with no excuses for you? Not for him, for you. Jesus wasn't going to hell. God created hell for the devil and his angels. Jesus created hell for the devil and his angels. Jesus wasn't going to hell. Jesus could have just decimated the whole earth, let you go to hell, and just spent all eternity with himself and the angels. So 
when it comes to you, when God calls you a volunteer, what's the problem? By the way, <laughs> Merry Christmas and Valentine's, Happy Valentine's Day to all y'all on here. <laughs> don't, don't let the door hit you. What a good Lord split you. You ain't got to get out of here. But I'm out. Peace. <laughs>